Today we'll be going on a trip to Scotland. Yes, Scotland. Located in the northwest of Europe, occupying the northern third of the island of Great Britain. It's part of the United Kingdom and shares a border with England to the south. Scotland has a very rich history, culture and geography. And I will explore all this in two of its popular cities, which are Edinburgh and glasgow so yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video and don't forget to like comment and subscribe first stop is edinburgh i traveled by train from london Houston to edinburgh which was about 4 hours and 20 minutes so make sure to bring snacks if you are planning on traveling to Edinburgh. Edinburgh is Scotland's capital and is one of Europe's most popular tourist destinations. The city attracts millions of visitors each year, offering a mix of old war charm and modern amenities. One thing that stuck out to me when visiting Edinburgh is the stunning architecture. I stayed at the travel lodge close to the train station residing in the old town of the city. The old town is characterized by its medieval layout with towering buildings, narrow closes and cobblestone streets. Unlike the new town, which is characterized by its wide streets, symmetrical squares and grand facades, Fun fact, the new town was designed in the late 18th century to accommodate the growing population and wealth of Edinburgh. Notable spots I visited in the new town is the Princess Street, which is one of the main shopping streets in the city offering a mix of high street brands, department stores, beautiful views of the old town across the gardens. Another thing that stuck out to me in Edinburgh is the transport system. The public transport is the highlight which comprises of buses, trams and trains. The Luthien buses is the main public bus operator in Edinburgh and offers extensive coverage of the city and suburbs with an affordable price. The Edinburgh trams run from Edinburgh Airport to the city centre, offering a quick and modern way to travel. And finally, the Edinburgh Waverley is the city's main train station and offers frequent services to other Scottish cities like Glasgow and Aberdeen. <music> I walk most of my time during my trip in Edinburgh. It's a very walkable city with many major tourist sites located close to each other. The city also has cycling infrastructure posts in place. Edinburgh really stands out as one of the UK's most iconic tourist destinations with its rich history and stunning architecture. The only critic I will give it is that for people considering living in Edinburgh is the rising cost of living, particularly in terms of housing. While there are more affordable neighborhoods, the city's overall housing market can be a barrier for those on a tighter budget. I'll be leaving for Glasgow next, having a dinner right now and then the next morning I will be going to Glasgow.
it's early in the morning and i will be heading to glasgow i'll be using a travel bus from edinburgh to glasgow which is around one hour and 15 minutes We'll be taking a few stops on our way to Glasgow. Our first stop is the Kelpies. The Kelpies are located in the Helix Park near the town of Forwick, Scotland, which is situated between Edinburgh and Glasgow. The Kelpies are two 30 meter high stainless steel sculptures designed by artist Andy Scott and the sculptures represent the mythical water creatures known as Kelpies in Scottish folklore. The sculptures also pay tribute to Scotland's industrial past, particularly its use of forces in canal work and heavy labour. The Kelpies are part of a larger transformation project and aimed at revitalizing the area and attracting tourism. The next stop is the Four Week Wheel, which is located in Four Week, Scotland, near the town's outskirts. It's about 23 miles northwest of Edinburgh and 20 miles um, northeast of Glasgow. The four week wheel is a unique and innovative rotating boat designed to connect the Fort and Clyde Canal with the Union Canal. The wheel stands 35 meters tall and rotates to lift boats between two different canal levels, replacing a series of old locks that once linked the canal. It's both an engineering marvel and a popular tourist attraction, offering broad trips that showcase how the wheel works and providing a symbol of Scotland's history of innovation and canal engineering. The final stop before we get to Glasgow is the Combono Centre. And the Combono Centre is the main shopping and service hub located in the heart of Combono, a, no a town in North Lancashire, Scotland. Opened in the 1960s, the centre was part of the town's development as a new town, intended to provide a modern shopping experience to serve the growing population. While the architecture may not appeal to everyone, it remains an essential focal point for the town's shopping and local amenities. Alright guys, we made it to Glasgow, Scotland, although the Scottish weather hasn't been the best for we move. I'm checking in into the Travel Lodge Hotel, although it isn't as good as the one I stayed in at Edinburgh. Just like with Edinburgh, Glasgow's architecture stuck out to me with its diverse architectural styles from Victorian and Edwardian to modern designs. The art scene is also very prevalent in Glasgow with both contemporary art and street art. Glasgow is home to a thriving contemporary art community with numerous galleries showcasing the work of both local and international artists. I visited the gallery of modern art and I got to see a lot of this contemporary art. The city is also known for its impressive street art with murals adjoining the buildings throughout various neighborhoods transforming urban spaces into open-air galleries. I also visited a notable museum in Glasgow referred to as the Riverside Museum and is a museum dedicated to the city's maritime and transport history. The striking modern architecture complements its historical artifacts inside, including vehicles, 
shape, models, and interactive display. The museum enhances Glasgow's reputation as a centre for design and architecture while celebrating the city's industrial past. I also visited the University of Glasgow, which is one of the oldest universities in the English-speaking world. The university has produced notable alumni, including scientists, writers, and artists, contributing significantly to Glasgow's cultural and intellectual landscape. Overall, Glasgow's artistic vibrancy, coupled with its impressive architectural heritage and cultural institutions like the Riverside Museum and the University of Glasgow, makes it a key destination for art lovers and historians alike. The main critique I'll give Glasgow, which applies to Scotland and most of Europe, is the unpredictable nature of the climate. Throughout my stay, it's just been raining, which could be very depressing for a lot of people hoping to move here. Alright guys, that was fun. I'll be leaving and going back to Reading now. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys want more videos like this, just make sure to like, comment and subscribe.